Hi, welcome to another BandLab video. Um, this one is long overdue. Um, this one I'm looking at um, how to customize your workspace, which can help with your workflow of what you're doing in BandLab. So um, hopefully some points here will help you with um, how you go about using the different features and how you can make it um, a little bit better for you to be inspired to um, use it more in creating different sorts of bits of music. So let's get into this. Okay, so here we are in the BandLab mixer. So I've got a MIDI instrument track set up. And one of the first places I thought I'd check out would be the view settings. So let's zoom in over here to the view settings and have a look at what we can find here. So here we can change a few things. We've got snap to grid. We've got grid size settings we can have a look at. Um, let's go down to density. This one helps to sort of zoom in without it being a, a, a zo traditional zoom in. So at the moment I'm on compact and all the fonts around the screen are sort of minimised. And if I click on that, all the fonts get a little bit bigger. The screen just changes just a little little bit. So depending on whether you're using a bigger monitor, this might be useful just to make it a bit bigger. You might be using a smaller monitor and you might want to have more of a compact sort of setting for that one. So that might be useful for some people. The next one um, is the themes. So the themes are great for um, just setting it up for you to be able to see everything uh, nicely. At the moment, this is the dark theme, um, and which is a stand one which I've, I've tended to get used to. Um, but let's go to the opposite of that to a, a light theme. And let's go back to that view. So now you can see it, everything's white. For me, it's a bit bright. Um, if we take a step back, we go to classic. That's where the top tool, toolbar sort of thing is in the darker colour. Then if we go to the next one back, they've labelled that cookie. If I minimise that one out of the way, you can sort of see we've got the top cookie, the bottom cookie and the um, the white scented filling, you could say, of, a, of a, one of those lug, luxurious cookies there. So it's always good to relate things to food. Um, and the last one was the dark one, which I had there originally. So set it up for how you seem to see, um, see it best um, and want to be able to use it. Um, yeah, that's probably an easy one. That's probably the biggest obvious um, setting that you might change in this whole thing. So next thing I find that's really useful to set up and customise is the metronome setting. So let's jump over to the middle here and zoom in here. So here we've got this and we've got some settings we can do here as well. So um, you might not like the traditional click. Okay, you might want to change it. They've got some really, really quirky cat noise. That's just bizarre. It sounds like something's being tortured. So you may be a bit twisted and would like to have a cat metronome sound. But yeah, have a look at those. You've got cowbell and a few other things, okay? Once you've got your sound, you can adjust the volume, which is really, really good. You might want to be playing um, a loud piece of music and you need that metronome up to be heard. You might be playing something quieter, but you don't want it to be sticking out really, really loudly. So you want to be able to adjust the volumes of those things. Um, but the last thing here that you might want to adjust um, is your count in. You, particularly when you're recording, this is like you might have a one bar count in before it starts the recording process. You might have a two bar uh, uh, recording um, intro. So that might give you a bit of time um, to get ready. So you might be hitting um, the record button over on one side of your, the room and then having to rush over to a piece of it, an instrument or putting it on or however you happens to be um, playing your instrument. Or it might be that you just want to start immediately and just record when you're ready. So it just depends how you want to use that particular feature there. Okay, um, the next thing, let's jump back to over here and go to the MIDI mapping. This one I find useful. So here I've got a keyboard set up and I'm going to map some of my controllers. So on my keyboard, I've got lights on this one so I can adjust the volume on certain sounds on my keyboard. But this is also a keyboard that has MIDI functions. So these can adjust things. So you might have volume faders and things that you might want to adjust different things um, 
you might have a a nano control um, device where you can you've got faders and buttons that you want to control different things. So let's start off with this one. So I might want to have this control knob adjust that one. So all I've done is selected that and turned it and it's recognized it. So if I go out of the mapping and now turn that, you can see that volume control change. Which for some people, they like that customization and being able to change those. Um, I might want to adjust the master volume. Okay, so if I go back in there, I can set that one to my other volume control there. So that's recognized that. And I can adjust those. Okay, so depending on where you're on in this program, if I go into instruments, there's other things here you can do. If I go into the effects and bring up, oh, let's just pick one of these. Okay, and I've got these different sorts of effects that I can control and map to different devices. So um, if you want more to know about that, I think I've got a, a video to do with MIDI mapping and going into that a little bit deeper. But that's another area worth customising in what you're wanting to do. Um, while I'm here, um, this other thing. So I've got a keyboard set up. And I've now got this effects thing set up. But what happens if I start changing this? Okay, so this one, let's just play a sound. Okay, so that's filtered piano. If I go to large hall. Okay, um, I might want to take some of the brightness out of that. Might want to bring up the lows. Okay, so you can eventually start customizing this and you'll start seeing that this has now been edited. Okay, so once you do that, you can then go save as, give it a name, um, whole piano, and then create a new preset. So now to find that one, I go up into my presets and I can find that there. Now some other ones that I've made here, I've got a piano, I was playing around with a delay. So it's a delay I've been playing around with. Um, if I go to Piano Sound, what did I have on that one? Okay, I've got a few things I put on here. Okay, so you can then customize your sounds. And when you save them into your presets, you can be using them again and again in each different sorts of um, band lab mixer project that you're doing. Okay, so that's really, really useful. Whether it's piano sounds, guitar sounds, it could be voice presets, it could be other sorts of presets that you've saved in the effects area that you've been using in your uh, workplace. Um, the last thing I want to point it out is, so I've adjusted a few things here. I might have a piano track setup that I've done. I might have had a voice track that I've added. Let's just add in a voice track. A voice track that I've got that I really like. Now if I then give that a name, um, what will I call it? Um, piano and voice. Call that and then hit save. Can't save it yet. I've got to record something. Let's just record something in there. Okay, here's my piano and voice track. Okay, so I've got that in there. Now I can hit the save button. This can now be a template for other recordings that I do. So let's go into my library now that I've saved that. And here I've got my piano and voice that I've just done. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Now I've got my piano and voice without the piano in the way and I can copy project. So if I could keep that as my piano voice template, I could rename it piano voice template and then I copy project. That's been copied. Now I've got two of them. 
Now, if I go into that one, Okay, I've now got all of those settings. It's saved my MIDI mappings. Computer's struggling. There we go. There we go. And it's got my um, mappings there as well for the sounds that I had for those things. So um, really, really useful sort of um, settings that are worth customising for your particular workspace and workflow in what you're trying to do. So just recapping, uh, we've covered um, view settings where you can change the colorization and the um, space. Um, there was the, um, what was it called? density where you can change the, the sort of the font size relating to those sorts of things across your screen. We looked at the metronome, we looked at the MIDI mapping, um, we looked at the effects where you can customise and save those and um, lastly the idea of saving everything as like a workplace template that you'd leave in your personal area that you can just copy and duplicate to come back to those settings for multiple projects. So hopefully that's been helpful in helping you get set up with customising your space and making it uh, flow a bit better for your needs. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and give me some suggestions um, for any other videos that you may need some help with. Okay, catch you later.